Hey everyone, so we're going to be doing a hydroelectric update soon. Uh, I want to do it at 500 kilowatt hours. Um, so we're at 486 at the moment, running at 304 watts, sometimes goes up to about 306. And when I first put the system in, it was at uh, about uh, 297, something like that, and the efficiency's gone up. And the reason for that is uh, parts are getting worn in, so the uh, the cups on the turbine are getting polished uh, so the water is deflected more efficiently and the inside of the pipe is also getting polished so the efficiency goes up over time rather than down and also probably the alternators getting worn in and things get worn in so the actual the efficiency is going up which is quite cool uh, you can see uh, we've made 100, uh, 486 kilowatt hours so far, far the hydroelectric was off for a good portion of the summer because we had a drought here it's back on now and it's working hard for me I've got hot water going and stuff the hot water time has just gone off and the, the um, portage is just building back up so yeah uh, we're gonna get to 500 kilowatt hours and we're gonna do an update hey everyone. Um, I just thought I'd run you through uh, some of my power usage and the hydroelectric so it's currently you know we're coming up to the uh, 500 kilowatt hours that we're gonna do the update for um, I'll do a time lapse when we get to that. That should be happening in around an hour or so's time. Uh, you can see currently my battery voltage is raising up. I've had the water heat wrong, so that's why they're not completely full. But they're um, they're getting up there. It's a 24 volt system. Uh, target voltage 28.8, and you know it'll be up there fairly soon. Uh, the output power of the turbine is currently 306 watts. Um, it's getting more efficient as all the components wear in. When we first installed it, it was about 297, something like that. Um, the array voltage, 50 volts. Uh, that 50 volts represents um, half the speed of the water velocity that gives us the maximum efficiency. Um, so when these batteries get full, this voltage will get to 28.8, then it'll go into float mode, mode and then once it goes into float mo mode, this um, this voltage will start to increase because the turbine will start to spin faster and produce less power. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's spinning faster and wasting some energy into free spin as opposed to generating the energy into the batteries. So I just thought I'd run through a bit of the data log. Uh, just so I can show you that this is a real system that does actually power my house. It's not just something for YouTube or anything like that. This is genuinely what powers my house. So you can see here is um, today, so far today, 2.890 watt hours or 2.8.9 kilowatt hours. Uh, the day before, 5 kilowatt hours. Uh, you can see here uh, sometimes I'm not in or not using as much power. It's quite uh, evident here which days I've been using more power than others. Um, sometimes if there's a really sunny day the hydro won't do much so I think maybe maybe there that must have been a sunny day but you can see if we scroll sideways here you can see that this is a very real system all of these represent this is in watt hours so we can just add a decimal place and turn them into kilowatt hours so that's 2.4 kilowatt hours this is 2.6 nearly 2.7 kilowatt hours as you can see, I mean, there's there's 6.4 kilowatt hours here, 6.4 kilowatt hours here. So you can see this is a very real system that does actually do real work for me and has been working very well. It's been working for a long time. Uh, it sometimes does go off. If there's, um, it was off for a period of time during the summer when there was a drought. Um, and if there is, I think there's some periods of off there. Um, if there's uh, no need for it because the sun's out, sometimes I turn it off. Um, as you can see, that, that wasn't actually the drought. I must have had that off for another reason. Um, I think probably if it's very sunny days, I like to turn it off because uh, it's just putting undue wear on the turbine when there's no need. And sometimes I just put it on in the night or whatever. My cat's just come to investigate. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that really quickly, or maybe not that quickly actually, um, just to show you that this is genuinely a real system that does actually power my house, and you can see the outputs there. Okay, there it is, 500 kilowatt hours. Um, I think we've gone through everything we want to go through here. Sorry, there's a little kitten 
trying to play with me so if the camera gets knocked I apologise so it's late now it's 10 o'clock at night so we shall do a walk around in the morning we'll go through the good and the bad of the system and uh, changes that are planned to be made okay. okay good morning everyone so we're up at the intake here so if you remember this is the intake box I built uh, for the most part it's been working very well as you can see I, I haven't cleaned it or anything it just self clears like that uh, there's plenty of water up here at the moment but there was uh, a bit of a lack of water during the summer uh, so we're going to do a few little uh, modifications to the system because of that uh, but I'll show you how this has been working uh, we'll chuck some leaves in it and stuff uh, currently there's three liters per second going through that although you probably can't tell um, but yeah if I was to go down and switch the turbine off you'd see a lot more water there all right, let's chuck some leaves in it. I'll show you how it's been working, how it clears and gets rid of the leaves. How it clears leaves, so a handful of leaves. I'll chuck them above the uh, above the intake here and you'll see it clearing the leaves quite well. So here come the leaves. Sometimes one or two do get stuck, but eventually they clear. There you go, there's two stuck just at the back there in that little cavity but it doesn't take much to clear them. If the turbine just changes speed a little bit, it'll blast a little bit of water up and those two will clear. We'll put in another big handful. Let's see, we'll come down here, get a big handful of leaves, like that. Chuck them up there. There they come. There we go, one of the other leaves just cleared one of the other ones that got stuck there a second ago. See the occasional one does get stuck but eventually it clears and every time I come up here um, it's clear of leaves so I never have to clean it out. Oh that one went, there you go. <laughs> See if one does get stuck eventually it does seem to clear itself which is good. Okay so uh, let's talk about some modifications I'm going to be doing. This here is the very very top of the stream and in the summer it was very very slow there's hardly any water coming through here and I have another um, stream at the back of the land over there um, but it borders my neighbour's property as well he's given me permission to pipe a little bit of water down to here so I can keep the turbine running in the summer it'll only be a litre a second or something like that but it'll keep it running all summer just keeping them topped up um, during the night because I have a lot of solar in the summer but it'll keep them topped up during the night uh, so that's modification number one is to move a little bit of water to here for the summer and I'll take you over to the lake and show you modification number So here is just down from the intake where the pipe leaves the stream and starts heading off down through the woods and it's at this point I'm going to intersect the pipe and have another pipe coming into a T which comes from the lake which is actually just behind me and I'll show you it possibly that mound there is the lake so I'll take you up there and show you the plan there's going to be a, a pipe coming down from up there and joining into the pipe that's now behind here is the pond or the lake um, I've been doing a bit of work up here flattening it off as you can see um, that bit of pipe you can see there is going to go in here um, so I'll dig a channel and bridge it across here um, and then that is going to head down that hill and intersect with the other pipe down there like I just showed you it will have a big butterfly valve on it and that will allow me to open that valve uh, either electronically or manually and I'll be able to take about half a meter or so off the depth of this pond because I'm going to raise up the depth of this pond about another half a meter by putting some more soil over in that corner bringing the level up over the pipe so I'll put the pipe in level with the water now and raise the level of the pond um, so then it never gets drained too far down so it won't hurt the wildlife so I'm just walking down the slope here that leads me to the turbine um, I'm trying very hard to not have a shaky video here but I had to get rid of my stabilizer because of uh, interference on the sound so doing my best I know it's probably still a bit shaky on the move but here is the turbine house the powerhouse this is traditional timber framed uh, larch um, construction pegged joints with a oak shingle roof and wattle and door walls to try and uh, keep the sound down a little bit so let's open the doors and I'll show you the turbine okay let's check out the turbine so here is my homemade turbine which I made in my shed 
running like that 24 7 that's currently running at uh, 300 watts uh, there is some modifications I need to do to this building because as you can see there's some damp uh, getting splashed up from the turbine um, so I'm gonna need to board out this whole area to stop that but I'll get around to that soon enough um, as you can see the pressure down there it's about 25 psi and that is a three-phase Pelton turbine um, and it goes into that little box in the corner there and the power then makes its way over to the shed so let's get this turned off so we can hear ourselves a little bit and I'll explain some modifications I'm going to be doing soon so as you can see this is a homemade turbine uh, made in my shed uh, it's actually very good it's quite efficient I think I've got up to about 68-70% efficiency something like that with it um, so it's quite good uh, but it does have some drawbacks to it is I only have the one nozzle it's adjustable but it's only the one nozzle which means uh, when I have good flow like I do at the moment I could easily be producing twice as much power and when it's raining I could easily get uh, four or five times as much power out of it up to about a kilowatt out of this piping system so the plan is to build a new turbine uh, we won't be getting rid of that one we'll just probably be moving it over a little bit and having a new one next to it so we'll have two one as a spare as a backup and one with um, four nozzles on it three fixed nozzles and one adjustable nozzle and I'll be able to run the fixed nozzles being more efficient so I'll be able to run them you know I'll have one that's for summer and then I can put another one on if it's summer and raining then I can put all three on during the winter and then I can have one adjustable one for fine tuning uh, and they're all going to be controlled by a um, probably by a microcontroller of some kind that will uh, send uh, a signal to open and close solenoids to open and close or, or um, so linear actuators or something that will open and close the valve so I don't have to come down here in the rain and uh, make adjustments throughout the winter so that would be good that's a project coming soon so that's uh, I, I actually I run a spare cable in here uh, on the wall there when I ran the cabling for this so it would allow me to add control later so that that cable is in there already um, so let's get this turned back on and uh, and we'll, I'll go and show you what all this whole system is powering all right let's turn it on it's such a lovely sound when it starts coming on I do love it always got to turn them on slow because uh, because uh, you don't want a water hammer effect and at the moment because I've got so much water I'll, I'll turn it on to absolutely full This is my little cabin in the woods that I built, a roundhouse, cordwood roundhouse that's timber framed with a reciprocal roof and this is one of the two buildings that the hydroelectric is powering, see the lights on in there at the moment, so let's take you inside and uh, show you around a little bit. This is my little house, um, a little cabin in the woods. It's a uh, cordwood and timber frame construction. I built it, you can uh, go and see how I built it if you haven't already. Um, it's not that bright in here because it's still early morning and I don't have lots of lights. I like that cozy feel, but um, yeah, it might come out a bit grainy, the picture I'm afraid, but that's how it is. We have a reciprocal roof. See up there, like a spiral roof. Yeah, so this is uh, the building that the hydroelectric powers. Um, so you can see I've currently got the lights on. I'm actually just put a pot of coffee on, which is just on there. Uh, it's just warming up, but I can also run this uh, two two element oven as well from it. Um, I'll just put that on and show you. This hydroelectric system also powers 
the fridge freezer there which uses about a kilowatt hour a day and so that's another thing that we get out of it um, I'm just waiting for this little oven to heat up here and I can show you that it powers a, a 1300 watt oven I don't know if you can see that there that says 1300 watts 1350 watts um, so we wait for that to heat up I actually did a little video um, of the cabin um, it was called a year living off grid and there was quite a bit of confusion around my power because a lot of people said oh yeah how can you be off grid uh, you've got internet that was that was the main one but a lot of people actually thought I was connected to the grid because of I was boiling a kettle and, and I and I did electric cooking and so on and they actually thought I was uh, connected to the grid for that reason which was quite a compliment because uh, because to have an off-grid setup that imitates being connected to the grid is, is something to be proud of so um, we just see this oven is just starting to come on here we go there's no generator or anything there's no trickery here but you can see that glowing red elements in the oven oh let's take that one out as well there's a bit of uh, washing up to do in the sink i apologize for the mess but i've just had my breakfast so you can see that there is red hot elements in there and that's all running from my hydroelectric not directly through some batteries but um, indirectly it then charges them back up again so there we go that's the cabin what it's powering we'll take you out to the workshop and show you uh, power tools and stuff that I can use see I'm out in the shed now uh, I can run all power tools uh, with a drill there's a grinder there I can run lots of stuff at the same time no problem this is all running off the hydro. Uh, it runs off a battery bank. I'm currently cooking as well in the house and all this stuff still starts up. Um, I shall show you the, uh, the battery storage which is under the counter just here. Okay, so in this cupboard down here is where the batteries are. I just have um, two leisure batteries and two car batteries. Uh, so not a huge amount of storage but the hydro keeps topping them up constantly and the inverters in there as well um, it's a bit of a mess I need new batteries so if you could like share and subscribe this video hopefully we can get some views on it and that will help me buy some new batteries that would be very handy okay so that's kind of everything with the hydro um, all working great and it's been working like that for a while now and I think it's going to continue to work like that for a while and soon enough we'll build a new turbine that's even more efficient gives us even more power because once the uh, the workshop over there the earth bag workshop over there is done we're going to need more power for that to run everything and lights and everything in there so we're going to do some upgrades so stay tuned okay so hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching